All right, so a uh, beautiful, quiet, rainy day here in Thailand, and um, I'm just going to, uh, you know, sometimes you got to kind of, well, I think every day here it's wise to just uh, go with the flow and roll with whatever uh, the day brings you. And today my original plan was to ride my motorcycle, which is now all done. Uh, so I was going to do that and enjoy that today, hit bonkers for a cappuccino, grab a nice workout at Centron Plaza, which is the Central Mall. Always just making myself happy. So um, Fawn works today. It's a work day for her. And so I'm here in her library, Hong Samut. And so that's my day. So I'm going to do that. And then tonight, uh, Fawn has laundry, I think she said to do. So she offered to do that in the city of Kolat. And then that will allow me to do an evening workout at the gym versus my typical late morning, which is fine. Uh, it's just leg day today, and uh, I've been following uh, Jay Cutler's videos. That, that's been very good for me. Uh, great hobby and encourages me. In my ego mind, I'm following along as though I'm uh, uh, right there next to him training for Mr. Olympia. And I'm trying to add like one kilogram of muscle and take off three kilograms of fat. So, on to the... <laughs> Onto the content. What I want to talk about is narcissism. Uh, not using myself as an example to the haters out there. Um, <laughs> some people are like, yeah, finally Rob's going to admit he's this bad guy. No, sorry. Uh, I try to do good. I really, I really try to do good. And I'm sure I've developed a healthy ego as probably any 60-year-old man has and, and tough, if you don't like it, tough. But um, narcissism probably, probably plays a role in a lot of overseas retirements. I think if a guy has had it enough with his prior relationships in his home country that he's not just willing, he's interested and actually makes the effort to go five or 10,000 miles away, uh, or if you measure your distance in kilometers, uh, there's, there's, there's got to be some reasonable probability he's run into trouble with narcissism, whether he knew it or not. Uh, I didn't really understand. I knew what it was. I, I, I'm just a couple classes short of a minor in psych, even though I was an engineer. I found psychology very interesting. And I recall one of my profs talking about narcissism, and I still recall his exact words. I don't know why. But he said, a narcissist is someone that is basically reading their own headlines about themselves all day long. And, and they're dangerous, poisonous people in your life. They're really bad. And okay, you know all this probably by our age. But then you'll come here and you'll run into narcissists as well. And, and sometimes I think there is a general tendency for people that have been taken advantage of in one way or another in their past, it becomes comfortable in a, in a weird kind of way. And then we will tend to go and seek that out in the next relationship. And there's plenty of narcissistic Thai women. Uh, again, 90% of the Thais, not interested in us, not worried about what we're thinking or doing. We're not an issue to them. They're living their happy Thai lives in their happy Thai land with all their happy Thai food and Thai dancing and Thai, Thai music. But when you do get somebody that's taken an interest in your life, you do have to look if it's an unhealthy interest. And I'm going to say this is... I think a big part of why I'm always telling people get some therapy or whatever you got to do to clear your head before you get here because if someone's going a long distance to solve a problem, that's great. It, it can. It, it's worked for me. I've solved a problem of finance because my divorce and my retirement happened at the exact same time, which again is terrible. You want your divorce and your retirement to be as far apart in time as possible. Ideally, you divorce five to ten years before retiring because you financially recover in that time. All that money you make, you get to keep. You're no longer giving away. You're no longer um, uh, forced or strongly encouraged to have a higher consumption lifestyle for a a lot of women want a bigger house, uh, more things, uh, a seven-passenger car. A lot of guys will just be very happy in an apartment with um, a car they like or a motorcycle they like or, or you know, whatever they're into and, and just go live their life, see their friends, and have a good time. A, lo a lot of guys don't need all the trappings, the social trappings. To me, and maybe I'm wrong, but just to me, I see that as more of something that, the, that uh, a wife will really push on a guy uh, that maybe, particularly as a guy gets older and thinks about his priorities more, he could likely or uh, would want to forego. And so, the, in my case, I really screwed myself. And I was aware, by the way, I've, told, I've said this before, but I was aware that I was, <laughs> was going to royally screw myself over 
by um, by doing the divorce right before the retirement. But I, it, it, that's how happy I was. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not, not that's not anything negative on my ex-wife. I'm sure she couldn't have been much happier either. You know, no matter whose fault, whatever it was, or who did what, it doesn't really matter. You can't really imagine two people being very happy in a relationship like that. So for me, it solved some problems. And I want, for me, I'll just say I wanted an adventure. I I had recently had some communication with an old friend of mine, uh, Alex. I'll just say his first name. We've been friends for since our teens. And we were in the same social group throughout our entire teen years, through high school and everything, and, and pretty close friends. And it was a small group of no more than, the group varied from three to six guys, and, and, and people went, came and went, but Alex and I were always in that group. So apparently looking back, at the time I didn't think about it, but looking back, it was a pretty important friendship to me. And he went on to travel the world, and I, I you know, and I said this once before, but I, the we did some childhood things and the growing up together. And the first time we rode motorcycles was this empty dirt lot. And I drove by it one day and the dirt lots a mile from where I lived. And I lived in that same square mile virtually my entire life from age 10 to age 56. And, 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 and my sent him that text message, it just, it kind of hit me in the heart. Like, geez, I've never really physically gone anywhere. Have I? I mean, when I traveled for vacation, I would just buzz down to the Caribbean, you know, flop myself on a beach for a week and come back. Uh, and then every other trip, I do a cruise. So generally, you know, uh, when I was in the big income years and the family time and all that, my wife and my two kids, uh, I would do one expensive trip, like a ten grander for a week, like Jamaica. I mean, Jamaica's pretty pricey. And then the other trip, I do a cheaper trip. It'd maybe be an all-inclusive in Mexico, or it'd be a cruise, and that'd be like a five grander. You know, and, and that was my my kind of my main travel every year. I never really went anywhere, and and that was bec- that. From initial thought of happenstance of me sending that text to my old friend Alex, within months, that was like kind of like a thought that kind of festered on me a little bit. Like, geez, I kind of regretful. Like, I kind of played it kind of safe, didn't I? And and then so he, so this worked for me, and that's great. And 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 you should find your own reasons, obviously. And if some of those reasons, some of those reasons might be because you've had a narcissist in your past or god forbid in your present and you're seeing the need to get out of that and great if you realize that that's awesome i'm happy for you uh i'm not going to say anything about anybody in particular in my past but uh i definitely ended up with a problem with that that i didn't see coming and 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 it was uh super obvious and i just didn't want to see it and other people around me pointed it out to me and i'm like oh that's not good and it wasn't. It wasn't good. And 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 once you kind of see the poison, it's like, oh man, now I got to fix this, and this is going to be an ugly repair. You know, this is going to be a bad one. And, but you got to look at it for whatever it is. Uh, I've always been. I've always tried to be the person that deals in reality with things. I I've always attempted that. I didn't always succeed with that. I deluded myself plenty of times. But I I tried, and I always valued reality. And so even if I did F it up from time to time, I would, I generally, I was able to self-correct on most things. It's just that, uh, somebody cop, it's just that this one really was expensive in every way something can cost you. It cost me, but still worth it. Still, still a good deal. Maybe a good deal for you. Other side of that point being though, clear your head, get that checked out, uh, before you come here, because what'll happen is, is you've got a kind of a battle of two cultures here. Same as we have in the States, if you think about it. We have the old school culture and the newer, uh, newer, younger, more modern, uh, particularly in the women you might be dating. Uh, if you meet a buddy, it doesn't really matter. That guy's not going to influence and unalter the trajectory of your retirement. So I don't really talk about that that much, other than just be careful who you associate with. But uh, with, um, with women, they can alter that trajectory and they can really cost you. And so that's why I'm always warning people. But uh, with the women, the modern, which I, I, you watch all my other videos, you know, again, you know, the colored hair, the modern clothes, the, the color, nail polish. Uh, traditional Thai women don't do nail polish and don't do the, the, the long, fancy nails, you know. Uh, all that, those are all, all the telltales, that's all in the other videos, all those classic signs. Maybe I'll put a list up on the screen. That'd be a good idea. And um, just be careful because uh, a lot of them are narcissists. 
if they're not a full-on narcissist of some kind, maybe they're not a full, even a full-on toxic or malignant narcissist as, as, as you can get defined. I'll put up a, a picture, maybe even a link. There's one lady I do like, Dr. Romani. I will, if you're having or think you're having a problem with a narcissist, I'll put you to her channel. I've checked out several. In my opinion, hers is the best and best by far. And I also like it's coming from a woman, so you're not going to get... It's easy to punch down. It's easy if you listen to a man talk about this. It's the, oh, women are this, women are... So I think it's kind of better to hear it from a woman because you can kind of cut all of that uh, potential waste of time in, look, in listening to uh, out of it. So I, I, I will. I'll put that in there. I, I think she's really very good. And I would just be careful. That, that's really what I wanted to say is, is that narcissists, we have those here in Thailand as well, unfortunately, and uh, you do need to be careful. And because of our ignorance with the culture as foreign residents here, it's easier to get gotten. You, you really have to step back at every situation and evaluate it as dispassionately as possible. And if you're unable to do that, admit that you're unable to do that. No one advance, I'm telling you, there will be times you will be unable to do that. And the only way to clearly navigate through is to have a Thai friend. And really, the only way is to have a Thai female friend. And uh, Thai women do make friends. They will make friends with you. And particularly if they're single but not age-appropriate for you to be dating based on whatever your dating pay grade might be, uh, you can make a friendship there. If, you're, if they have a foreign husband, you're friends with the foreign husband, then the, the wife is kind of a safe thing. I wouldn't go chatting with the wife on your own because that's, that's as inappropriate here as it is back home. Uh, maybe even more so, but you can talk with your pal and then, hey, hey, do you, can, we, can we ask your wife this? Would you mind, could we, could we ask your wife that? And they have a radar for all this that we're never going to have. And I'll tell you, my friends, uh, two, my two best friends here would be uh, Kru Usani, uh, Kru means teacher, so uh, Usani, and then I, I put her Thai Learning School website on, on pretty much every video, if I remember, and then Fawn. And both of them spot a bad lady she whiz, it's 20 seconds maybe. They, they, they see it a mile down the road. In my opinion, uh, the Thais are not very good liars, which is a compliment to them. They, they don't, I, I suspect maybe they don't do it as much as we do in the West, um, but for whatever reason, when, when they, in the rare moment they do do it, I can generally see it. When I haven't seen it is when I've had my eyes all googly with stars in my eyes looking at a beautiful lady that I was dating and I was thinking about what prospects might be in it for me with this beautiful and incredibly attractive woman that would never give me the time of day back in my home country that now is all over me. And because I'm dumb sometimes. And we all can be dumb sometimes. And I certainly have had my share of dumb things and dumb moments. That could be a whole separate channel. There you have it. That's what I wanted to say, narcissism. I kind of saw this connection that, hey, it could be the thing that kind of brought you here, and then if you're not careful, it'll be the thing you end up with again, and that doesn't work out. Uh, and I see that here, and that does not work out for anyone, except maybe the narcissist. That I couldn't tell you. All right, well, good luck. I got a lot of bonus footage. I'll try and put a couple pieces in here, and that's it. Thanks. Just checking into the gym. Uh, when... I wear one of these shirts, which is common, because Fawn buys matchers for me and her. She thinks it's cute, which is fine. I don't care. It's fine. But everybody gives me a weird look because they got to think, am I a teacher? Am I a government employee here somewhere? What am I doing? Kind of, kind of funny. Oh, you can see Fawn walking away, your little tiny legs. So this is called RN Yard, which they spell in English, which is weird because English is not commonly spoken out here. Uh, there's like the pavilion where we just ate our meal and they got like tables and there's a little concession stand if you want like a beverage and then uh, that's the actual market it's it's a, like two football fields probably let's see can we see him oh yeah there he is Coon Paw happily spraying one of his 15 rice fields uh, perhaps he's smarter than all of us and he's just uh Happily going about his life every day if nobody freaking bothering him. So it's got to be pretty nice. What's also pretty nice is this morning view over the rice fields that my iPhone is actually capturing this morning. Um, that's almost exactly what I'm seeing. It's really quite beautiful. That stand of trees. I love pine trees. Happy childhood memory. So we could all use more of those. And... Uh, 
this little road here, which works pretty well. Dang Thai soil around here, though. It just, everything grows. You can't, you can't have a square inch anywhere that doesn't have stuff growing in it. I don't know. What Look at this. It's like a dump already. I gotta figure out the hell to do with that. Put down like a soil fabric or something. Keep stuff from growing. I don't know. I don't know what you do. I want this all concrete in here. No grass. I guess that's the engineer in me. I just want a sterile, clean environment. Uh, I don't know. Leave that for the shrinks, but that's just what I want. That's what I'm going to do. If I can ever finish this damn place. Rather pleasant view, though. Look how neatly they plant the rice. I mean, it's like a pattern. They do that by hand. Now the sun's really coming up. And then there's the snow lynch. Waiting on my logo. Logo's supposed to go in there. Um, felt super arrogant. The guy is like, well, your logo goes here. And then Fawn's like, yeah, and look at the other gates. They all have some kind of logo in them. I'm like, yeah, okay, I had no idea. So, But uh, I like my little friendly top. <laughs> my little friendly iron thorns at the top of all the posts. It's kind of funny, but... You don't want a convenient spot for someone to come over. And the trees in the background have all kind of grown, and the ones that Kunpa trimmed, trimmed in air quotes. When a farmer trims something, he basically just almost kills it and just stops short of killing it. And that's what they call trimming. Gotta love it. Good old Kunpa. Let's see if we can get a zoom in on you. There. There he is, just working away. Nobody bothering him. He's not bothering anybody else. Look at that. So if you see somebody wearing an overly tightly fitted shirt, with blonde hair, eating some uh, tofu, barley, and uh, branch chain amino acids, say hi, because that's almost certainly me. My name is Rob, and thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. I meant every word I just said with respect.